Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth part of the United Pop 3D Designer Toy Robot class. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at unwrapping and texturing our model. Uh, this is sort of like a late night recording session for me, so I apologize if I'm a bit slower than usual. Um, but we're going to be taking a look at uh, what we need to do to prepare our model for texturing. Uh, which is the, the process of unwrapping our geometry and flattening it out on a UV um, grid. So, what the hell are UVs? Well, uh, like we discussed in the first class when we started modeling our toy robot, uh, we have uh, three dimensions when it comes to modeling geometry. We have X, Y, and Z. So that's what we use to actually create our model. But then we also have a, a 2D space called uh, UV, uh, which is used to uh, create coordinates for the textures that we need to apply to our model later on. So the way you can think uh, about this is if you've ever done um, a mathematical exercise in middle school or maybe even primary school where you got a uh, 2D piece of paper with a uh, print on it of a cube or a different type of um, 3D object, um, you had to cut it out and then uh, glue it together and, and make it into uh, a 3D object. And this was usually some sort of exercise to practice with um, what, you know, how to calculate volume, for instance. So that's sort of what you see in front of you here. On the left, you see what a 3D model looks like, which is just a very simple cube. And, on, and then on the right, uh, it's corresponding UVs. So you can see that when we, if we were to cut open uh, the cube uh, on a couple of different, um, couple of different edges, uh, we get this sort of T-shaped flattened out cube. Um, so that's basically what we're going to do with our 3D toy robot as well. So it's like creating a, uh, a 3D cutout, um, but, but in reverse. So instead of starting out with a 2D print, we start out with a 3D model and we flatten it out on the UV space. So when we look at what that looks like for a more complex uh, game model, uh, it looks something like this. So you can see here that we have a character and all the different um, all the different uh, parts of this character are cut up and flattened out on, onto a 2D plane. And you can see that the, the creator of this model took care in finding where the, what we call the natural seams of the model are. So for instance, you can see here that this uh, game character has a sort of like a top, sort of like a tank top she's wearing. And the creator basically cut out two seams uh, right on the on the side of the of the torso of this character, so right below the um, below the armpit, basically, which is a very smart place to to put a texture seam, because sometimes uh, texture seams can be quite noticeable uh, when it comes to game models. So if you place a texture seam underneath the arm, it's not going to be uh, it's not a part of the model you're going to be looking at that much, especially when there's an arm in front of it. So the art in uh, unwrapping a 3D model is basically looking where all the uh, seams should be or what's what the most logical place is to uh, cut up your model and then following those seams and using that to divide your model. So you can see as well that they, they took each arm and the head and uh, I guess is the, these are the pants right here, or the, the trousers of the character, um, which are all sort of individual UV shells. Uh, UV shell is basically a uh, connected, uh, uh, connected collection of UV coordinates, so like you see over here. Okay, so one thing that we really have to be careful with when we do UV unwrapping, especially when we get to more complicated geometry, like for instance a game character, is that we make sure that we don't warp our uh, our geometry too much, or our UV uh, coordinates of our geometry. So what you can see right here is uh, in light blue is uh, a world map as it's usually depict, uh, depicted on uh, on a regular 
a, a school map, for instance. Uh, but then the dark blue is the uh, size of each country adjusted for the warp. Um, because as you know, the Earth is a globe, even though some people uh, try to convince you otherwise nowadays. Uh, but the Earth is in fact a globe. And as you can see, the further up north you go, the more distorted uh, the size of the countries become. So for instance, Greenland, which is quite big, uh, but it's not nearly as big as you see on a flattened out, uh, flattened out world map. So you can see, like on, on on a regular map, it's it's almost bigger. Whoops, it's almost bigger than Africa, uh, which is just not tr not true. It's a lot smaller than Africa. Actually, a Africa is huge, and because Africa is closer to the equator, uh, there's less distortion there. So the closer you get to the poles, which is the top of the map, the more stretched out the the countries become. Because as you ca uh, can imagine, the top of the map is just one point, but it's stretched out uh, along an entire um, an entire axis. So in this case, the the U the would be the U axis of a UV space. So we've got the vertical and the horizontal, which is the V for vertical and the U for U horizontal or something. I don't know. <laughs> v is vertical. Um, so yeah, that that's something that we have to take into account when we do unwrapping as well, because it can be um, it can be very detrimental to the quality of your textures. But we'll get to that later on. Again, this is sort of uh, a, a even more accurate representation of what I just showed you. So you can see that if you were to create a more accurate cutout of the world, you would actually need to have the spikes on the top of your UV uh, texture because uh, that would account for the fact that the top of the world is just one point. Um, so then the last thing we already talked about uh, finding natural seams and keeping an eye on distortion and warping. Uh, then the last thing that we really want to discuss is uh, texture density and, and sort of the balance of detail and optimization. So texture density basically re refers to um, the predefined uh, amount of pixels you'll see per, for instance, square meter. So you can see that in this case we have a, uh, a cube again, which is one by one by one meter. And we're going to be using a uh, 1024 by 1024 pixel uh, texture density for for a side one side of that cube. So meaning every uh, square meter on an object in our game world would have uh, 1024 by 1024 pixels. And then if we were to create a, a ground plane, which is usually a bit less detailed because you don't look at the ground that much usually when you're playing a game, we could double that. So we could say that, okay, we're going to have a two meter by two meter ground plane, which is going to use the same um, pixel density. So that's basically what texel density means. It's just how much pixels per square meter or square inch or square centimeter you're going to be using. Um, and the most important part to take away from this is that if you want to double your um, your your detail, so for instance, you want to, this is 1K, uh, 1024 pixels. Uh, if you want to go to 2K, which would be 2048 pixels, um, then you double, you might double your detail, but you actually quadruple your uh, your file size. So. That's why it's important that we sort of optimize our model for uh, um, accounting for where we want our detail to be. So where where is the player going to be looking? Uh, what's going to be most noticeable? And we want to sort of reserve a bit, a bit of a little bit of extra texel density for those parts, because if we were to decide we're just going to uprest the entire model, then we have to um, multiply the the uh, the the amount of textures that we're going to use in two dimensions. So the again, the U and the V, which means you actually quadruple your um, your file size. So having said all that, I think that's enough theory. Let's get to actually unwrapping something. So let me actually get rid of this real quick so we can get the entire process. Um, and let me actually check, am I still? Recording, yeah, I'm recording. <laughs> Would be kind of funny if I re recorded that whole, uh, told that whole segment and didn't record anything. So what you're seeing right here 
is the model that uh, we've been working on in previous classes. I took the liberty of adding a couple of extra bits, such as these little um, gizmos right here, which you can use to have some, uh, I don't know, some some measurements of oil pressure or whatever, or electrical pressure. Uh, I don't know, that's how I think, electrical pressure. Um, Anyway, you can just some, add some nice details to your model to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, for now, I'm not going to focus on that, but just note that I did took the time to change my model a little bit. And I added this uh, fun little wind-up key as well, because all toy robots need to have a wind-up key, in my opinion. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, because I've already unwrapped this arm, and let me actually show you guys what it looks like. So... Um, to start unwrapping, you want to go to the top of your um, poly modeling shelf and you want to click the UV editor. And wh when you do that, you get a, another window. And in my case, in my case, I'm just going to dock that to the side here. And you also get a UV toolkit, which has all the uh, different U UV tools that you're going to be using. So as you can see right here, I have my arm selected. And this is what it looks like in the UV space right now. And you can see these little squares on the arm, uh, which is just a, a stand-in for what a texture will eventually be, which is very useful because you can see sort of what the detail is going to be li like uh, by looking at how big these blocks are. So um, the smaller the blocks are, the more detail. And let me actually demonstrate that real quick by just selecting everything here. And... Uh, scaling it up so as you can see if i if, if i were to scale this up so it uh, takes up more uh, texture space so uh, more pixels you can see that the uh, squares have actually shrunk in size and when i go back you see that they increase in size so that's one very useful feature of it the other useful feature is that you can sort of check distortion so if these squares aren't really perfectly square you know that there's some warping going on and that you need to fix that um, so as you can see, um, this is sort of what a unwrapped model looks like, or at least one piece of a model fully unwrapped looks like. And it's basically what I've done, uh, where, where you can see these white lines running across my model. Um, that's where I've decided to place some seams. Now, why did I decide to place them there, right? Because uh, I didn't just place them there randomly. I, I sort of went through the entire model and picked uh, a good place to... Uh, cut up my uh, my UV coordinates. Well, uh, there are a couple of like I I guess you could call them uh, golden rules or, or most commonly used practices when it comes to UV unwrapping. And one of them is that you actually always put a seam uh, wherever there's a hard edge. So if I disable my uh, my wireframe real quick, so you can see that when I'm looking at my sort of shaded model right here that I've got a couple of these edges for instance this edge right here which is a hard edge meaning that um, it, it sort of signifies yeah just a hard edge on, on my model where there's like a very distinct uh, very distinct shape uh, if I were to look at the the sort of center of my hinge here my, my shoulder hinge you can see that this edge right here is a lot softer so uh, it's not that clear where you would place a, a seam on this model. In this case, I've just chosen to go with the uh, center loop, the center edge loop of this bevel uh, right here. Uh, but I, I could have chosen this loop or this loop. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, so th that that's basically the, the first rule that you can uh, always follow. is just where, wherever there's like a hard edge, a very clear... Uh, um, very clear bend or or I don't know a better way to put it just a hard edge in your model is where you want to uh, put a put a seam so that's that, that already gets you a long way because as you can see um, I have a lot of hard seams in in this particular object right here like I have some hard seams over here and over here and of course you know any edge of like a unrefined uh, cube is a hard edge so these are all hard edges they can all be uh, they can all be uh, seams in my uv coordinates um, and then when it comes to like round pieces such as for instance this 
uh, this loop right here, this face loop, uh, that is just like uh, from from one one direction the the y uh, y axis. That's just a flat shape. So I can just project, uh, which I'm going to be showing in a minute. I can just project uh, my UV coordinates on a on a very flat surface, and it'll it'll be fine. So um, when it comes to uh, cylindrical shapes like for instance this inner uh, loop right here or the uh, outside of of this hinge which is a cylinder as well there's actually a specific tool you can use for that so uh, it just depends on on sort of what it is that you're looking at and these are very hard uh, mechanical shapes so it's it's quite straightforward when it comes to more organic uh, shapes, it becomes a bit harder to decide where it is that you want to place your, your seams. Um, but when we get to that in a later class, that'll sort of um, sort of become more apparent because you generally just want to try and avoid um, distortion as much as you can. So I've already done that part. I actually want to unwrap my leg because as, as you can see, when I click it, uh, it's sort of a mess and we have to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my leg and then hold down shift and select drag all my other parts and press H to hide them because I don't really need them right now. And then the first thing I want to do is I just want to delete all the UVs I have for this so far. So I'm just going to select all my UVs and press delete. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my leg and I'm going to create a new set of UVs. So I'm going to go to my UV editor and go to the create tab right here. And I'm going to uh, select planar. So whenever you create a new uh, set of UVs, uh, it, it basically, the, the Maya basically wants you to choose a way that you want to project your, your texture. So when we talk about projecting uh, in, in Maya, it, it usually rever refers to a certain way of wrapping uh, your UV coordinates around your uh, geometry. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to go for a planar and I'm actually going to click the little options box right here because uh, I want to project from the X axis and I, I already selected that. So I'm just going to go project and now you can actually see that it's messed up a little bit. Let me do that again, because <laughs> uh, we need to change one parameter. We need to uh, check this little box right here that says keep image width height ratio. So by default, whenever you project something using one of these options, um, planar mapping or cylindrical mapping or whatever, uh, it'll try to sort of uh, force your uh, texture into the zero to one UV space. So you can see as we zoom out, we have a grid and uh, each one of these little squares represents one decimal on the UV space. So you can see that right here, our origin is zero and the, the, the first um, defined grid line is at the uh, one on the U and the V uh, coordinates. So it's a one by one square. And of course there's like smaller increments, but that's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go to project and now you can see it's basically done a pretty perfect projection of my leg from the X axis. But as you'll notice, and again, this is why uh, this uh, checker pattern is very useful, which you can, by the way, turn on and off with this little icon right here. I forgot to mention that, but when you click this icon, uh, it'll uh, show you this, um, this uh, texture placeholder. But if we go to the side of our model, you can already see that there's some strange things going on. And that's because um, we've projected our U UV coordinates uh, on a 2D plane uh, on a 3D model. So it'll do, you know, great from one side, but once we start turning around, you can see that uh, the, these faces right here, these coordinates are totally warped. So we need to fix that. Um, another way of visualizing this is also, uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up in the editor like this, but there's a little option right here. Uh, that says UV distortion when you click that. Uh, yeah, so you can actually see where where it's red. 
uh, there's a lot of distortion and where it's white there's less distortion so you can see from the side it looks fine but once we get to the front of the leg there's just it's just all red because it's all distorted uh, because again we didn't project from any other direction only from this direction so let's start fixing that so I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the right mouse button. Let me take a sip of water real quick. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and select UV shell. And I'm just going to select the shell. And the movement tools and the uh, scale and rotate tools are uh, the same uh, as in the um, 3D editor. So W for the move tool. And we can just start moving this around. And I'm just going to separate this real quick. So um, the reason these things aren't connected is because my geometry isn't connected. So you can see that when I go to object mode um, and I, for instance, go to face and then uh, double click this bottom part, uh, you can see that it's, it's not connected to my foot or my knee in any way. It's just sort of stuck together. It is one object, but the geometry itself isn't connected. And that's also why it's not connected in the, uh, in the uh, UV editor. So so let's uh, start taking a look at this upper part real quick uh, I mentioned before that we can um, uh, there's a, a couple of different types of projections that we can use um, so one of the things you we can use is cylindrical projection uh, right here cylindrical mapping it's called so if we click that uh, whoops I think I need to select UV shell in order to do that yeah, there we go. So what it's done now is, as you can see in my uh, 3D viewport, it's uh, created sort of like this um, intricate gizmo around my uh, around my top part of my leg. And you can see that it's actually done uh, for at least for the side. It's it's not done a very bad job of um, uh, unwrapping it, but it's not perfect. So uh, let me actually see if I can do it like this. Edit. No, that's not it. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's a way to align um, my projection with my leg in the options, but I don't think there is. So what we're going to do instead um, is we're going to just do it manually. Uh, so as you can see right here, like I said, we sort of have this cylindrical shape around our cylinder, but it isn't aligned because our uh, geometry is sort of at an angle and this isn't, so we need to match that. So if we go down here, you see this very tiny uh, T-shaped red thing. If we click that once, you'll see that our gizmo has changed and we now get a more recognizable uh, version that we are used to using in the 3D viewport. And then when we click again on this sort of outer perimeter of our gizmo, this circle, uh, you can see that our rotate tools become visible. Now, if I click the uh, X rotation and I hold down J to snap, you can see that I can rotate my projection and you see that it immediately looks a lot better. So it's not perfect, it's still a bit warped, but that's fine, we're gonna fix it later. Um, so if I want to commit this, I just click somewhere outside of my uh, range and it'll create a projection for us. So there we go. Um, in this case, it's, it places the seam uh, on the back side of my leg. Uh, I can also rotate the cylinder in uh, cylindrical shape that we had the projection gizmo in order to get the seam on another side. Let me actually go ahead and demonstrate that real quick by doing this one as well. So again, I'm going to go uh, to uh, to the top here and click cylindrical mapping. Click it once uh, to get our, our cylindrical mapping gizmo. Then I'm going to go and press my little red T again and then click the outer perimeter of our gizmo to get the rotation tools and I'm just gonna rotate it again like so. Now if I were to rotate it on the y-axis you can see that uh, this white line 
I don't know how clear it is to you. I hope you can see it. But it's this white line right here that runs down the middle. If I rotate my gizmo, you can see that it changes position. So that's where the scene is going to be. In this case, I just want to have it at the back of my leg, like I did with the top. And I'm just going to commit. So, so that already, uh, already looks a bit better. But if we click our UV distortion again, uh, which is the little... Uh, shape right here, the L shape with a little white uh, bottom. Uh, you can see that it's still a bit distorted, uh, just a little bit. It's actually it's actually har hardly noticeable in this view, but uh, it's still a bit distorted because we can see that our our little um, our little squares, our placeholder texture is sort of stretched. So how can we fix this? Well. Um, like with all the other marking menus that we've taken a look at in our previous modeling classes, um, the marking menu for, for the UV editor is, is context sensitive. So if we hold down shift and right mouse button in our uh, UV uh, space, we get a different uh, marking menu with a different set of tools specifically for UVs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down right mouse button and select these two shells. And then I'm going to hold down shift right mouse button and I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to go down uh, or no, I'm going to go to the left where it says unfold and I'm going to hover over the options box once again. So the unfold to basically what it does is it relaxes your coordinates. Now, what the hell does that mean, right? How, what do you mean relax your coordinates? Well, um, it, imagine you uh, you have like a, a chocolate uh, bunny, a chocolate Easter bunny. So a chocolate Easter bunny is is uh, uh, a 3D object, right? Um, but what happens if your chocolate bunny melts is basically uh, the entire surface of what your chocolate bunny was made out of sort of becomes this puddle, and it, it which can be spread out over 2D plane another analogy for unwrapping but uh, when you melt chocolate it uh, uh, allows it, it becomes liquid and it can sort of flow over your table or your plate or whatever uh, so this is sort of similar to that um, it it sort of allows your UV coordinates to sort of melt down in in all directions uh, equally which means that um, it, it sort of gets stretched out a little bit in, in all directions and it takes any warping that you have and tries to get rid of it. So let me let me actually just show you what it looks like. So I have my uh, Unfold UV open here, which again, I can go to by holding down Shift, uh, right mouse button and going to Unfold and then the Options box. And then uh, in the Solver options, you see uh, a little box here that says Iterations. Now, basically an iteration in this tool means uh, it does one operation where it tries to relax your coordinates and usually doing one operation is enough but in a lot of cases uh, you want to have multiple operations especially when you're working with a bit more complicated model like a like a for instance a, a human character so in this case mine is set to 100 which is fine uh, so it, it will do a hundred iterations of um, of the relax operation every time that you use this tool um, you can also define some other things such as uh, pixel size or map size stuff like that but that's not really important for now so I'm just gonna Hit, uh, you can change this when it's set to one. You can change change it to ten or a hundred, or you can even try a thousand. Uh, it's a bit overkill. You don't want to go too high because it, there's a uh, chance that your Maya might crash. So a hundred is usually fine. So I'm going to click apply and close, and now you can see once I do that, now all of a sudden my uh, my my squares, my placeholder texture becomes uh, a lot more. Uh, uniform so where our squares used to be pretty stretched in the, in one direction now they're nicely uh, laid out and you can actually see earlier when I said you can sometimes see where the seam is in a in a texture which is pretty clearly shown right here because you can see there's a bit of an offset in these two uh, squares right here there's actually another way we can fix that as well so you can see that when I did the unfold option that my uh, my 
my two shells also skewed a little bit so they they rotated a little bit like this um, and another way we can get them to sort of behave let's uh, let's say is if we select both of them and go shift right mouse button and then there's a strain UVs option and once we click that now you can see that it's really nicely aligned so what, we, what I just showed you is basically the gist of how you're going to unwrap this entire model. Um, there's a lot more complex um, tools that you can use, UV tools, um, but for now this is all that you really need to unwrap, unwrap your entire model. Uh, there is one other thing that I want to show real quick because there is one part of this um, robot that has a bit more complicated geometry uh, and you might need to approach that a little differently so let me actually go to actually let me just unhide everything real quick or oh no my leg is hidden ah, that's fine so i created this little like um spiral shape on the top of his head that is supposed to go in between uh two of these antennas by the way the reason i i only uh, ever unwrap one side of a symmetrical character is because you can save yourself a lot of time if you simply unwrap for instance one arm and one leg and one antenna in this case and then just mirror it when you're done so uh, that can save you a lot of time but but this shape is a little bit tricky because it's sort of like a spiral helix shape and doing uh, uh, doing planar and cylindrical projections isn't going to get you very far so we're going to do it differently uh, again I'm going to just select all of the UVs I have and delete them and then I'm just gonna uh, uh, let's see I'm just gonna go to uh, my object mode select my make sure I have my thing selected I'm gonna go to create and I'm just gonna go camera based so whenever you click camera based um, projection you might already see uh, it just chooses uh, projection from where your current camera is looking from so you can see that my, my UV coordinates now exactly co uh, mirror my uh, current camera um, view so if I for instance were to rate, rotate it like over here and I were to create another set uh, camera based you can see that now it's completely different okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of our UVs and we're gonna go up to uh, modify and then we're gonna go unitize now what unitize basically does is it it cuts up each and every single polygon of our geometry right here as you can see because every uh, single uh, polygon has like these white border lines around it and it uh, just uh, just projects every polygon over the entire um, 0 to 1 UV space so uh, now what I want to do is I want to select a seam so where I want my seam to eventually be and I'm just going to do that by double clicking uh, and as you can see now I've selected an entire edge loop and then I'm gonna go to my UV editor and I'm gonna go control right mouse button and I'm gonna tell it to go to UVs to UVs and now what it's done it's selected all the UV points uh, that were on that um, on that edge so um, what I'm not, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna drag over my uh, all my uh, UV coordinates and basically what this does is it uh, inverts your selection and then what I want to do is I want to go to uh, shift right mouse button and I'm gonna say um, I don't know if it's over here I might need to do it over here uh, not all the tools are in the marking menu so I'm gonna go to my uh, UV toolkit on the right to cut and sew and I'm gonna say stitch together and this might take a while to process one eternity later so I realized I uh, made a mistake and I actually forgot something uh, pretty important uh, so if you have any caps on the end of your 
your cylindrical shape, whether it's a helix like this or any other cylindrical shape, uh, make sure that you ha don't have any caps. Or if you do have any caps uh, on your shape, make sure you don't have any UV selected. So um, cap is just the, the end point of a, uh, of a tube or any cylindrical shape. Um, so in this case, I don't have any, but if you do, make sure you don't have any of those selected when you do this. So um, as you can see, now that all my unitized UVs are um, suit together and selected, uh, we still have these uh, edges right here on the side that are still uh, not uh, sewn together. So we can actually select those by just um, by just shift selecting everything or dragging down with the marquee tool um, and as you can see it's made like a giant projection of all the uh, of, of all the polygons that we had in this shape and looking at this now I might actually argue that it's a bit too high poly but we uh, we already are committed to this shape right now so I'm just gonna go forth uh, so I'm just going to select all of these and again you can see wherever there's a, a, a seam or a cut when there's just a, a very clear white line So let me just I have to select all of these because I'm not going to do them one by one because I'm going to be here all evening Let's see So And I have all those I just selected and I'm just going to hit so right there now um let me actually for, let me actually first scale this down a little bit better so we have a better idea of what's going on so you can see that already has a pretty good result but our um our ruvs are still stretched as you can see because all of our uh cubes or all of our squares are way too stretched so what i'm going to do to improve that is i'm going to do another uh unfold but this time uh, i'm gonna simply uh i'm, I'm gonna restrict it to one uh, axis so uh, let me actually do it like this so if you go to shift right mouse button and go to unfold you can choose a, a two options or three options but two of them are unfold along u or unfold along v uh, and in this case i only want to unfold uh, along the the vertical axis of this one so i don't want this to get warped in any way uh in 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 the in the u axis which is this axis right here so i'm going to go to unfold and i'm going to go unfold along v and now you can see that is already uh, given us a better result uh, but there's still a tiny bit of warping going on and we can fix a tiny bit of warping by uh, going to straighten uvs one less time and now i hope my maya doesn't crash because i'm asking too much of it but that should sort of sort of uh, give us the best result for this shape Please don't crash on me. That would be anticlimax. <laughs> there we go, and we're back. So, um, yeah, it's it's still a bit large, and it's the best result I think we can get. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see that. Yeah, there's still a little bit of warping going on but for for something that's actually quite small in our model this is fine and it's really the, sort of the best result that you can wish for a very, pretty intricate shape like this so i'm just gonna leave it for what it is and scale it down a little bit and uh yeah that should be fine so uh that's one thing i wanted to show you guys and um i i wanted to uh, stop right here, but now that we're go we've gotten this far, let me actually just um, keep continuing to un unwrap our lag because it's not that much work. So uh, we we looked at like.
planar projections and cylindrical projections for our leg. And we're just going to continue doing those for now. So what I want to do right now is I want to select all the um, all the faces um, that can be that sort of share um, one axis. So in this case, actually, let me do that differently. I'm going to go to vertex. I'm going to select these two vertices. And I'm going to go and control right mouse button two faces like that. And then I'm also going to select these uh, loops right here because all of these faces share um, can share one projection on the x axis. So I'm just going to select all of those and go to the top of my uh, polygon modeling shelf and click planar mapping. And now you can see that uh, that uh, did its job. Uh, again, it's a bit big, but that's fine. We're going to fix it later. Uh, one thing I do want to check for now is I actually want to select these two and drag them out. And yeah, so um, one thing you also want to keep an eye on, it's not actually that big of a deal, but it, it, it can cause you a bit of trouble. Uh, I just I just selected this option right here uh, on the uh, top of my UV editor on the left where it says uh, shaded. Uh, if you click that, uh, now what it shows you is that um, what basically what um, what side of the UV coordinates are are shown. Um, the best way I can explain this is actually by going back real quick. Um, so I did this planar projection, but the planar projection only um, uh, creates UV coordinates from, from one side. So if I uh, select my planar mapping, uh, you can see that I get this, this gizmo that's similar to what we saw in the, um, uh, in the, the cylindrical projection gizmo, uh, except it's just a plane. Uh, but the plane only projects UV uh, coordinates from one direction. So it's not like it's like a continuous projection throughout the entire model. Uh, it, it basically chooses one direction and then it, it projects it from that side. So in this case, uh, it probably projects it from this side um, because if I let go and actually uh, select my UV shells that I've created, um, and let me actually sort them out like this. So again, you can you can check what side your um, your your faces has have been projected from by clicking the little uh, shaded icon right here. And what it shows you is that blue uh, bl blue is just projected from the right side. So um, in, in one of the earlier classes, we talked about normals and that every face has like a normal that runs. Uh, or, the, or it stands perpendicular on uh, the face to the, uh, the the edges that it has. So you can sort of see it in the way that, that my gizmo right here um, is is located. It the x axis in this case is also the the direction that my normals are facing, and the planar projection basically looks at the normals of your of your faces and tells you okay if the normals are pointing this way i'm going to project it the other way but because i had these ones selected on the other side as well uh it projected those from the back side so these are fine these are projected from the uh, from the uh, direction of our normals but these are actually projected from the back side so basically think of this as like a projection ray that's shooting through our entire model and it hits the the uh, the front side of these faces but it hits the back side of these faces so now the projection of those uh, faces are are reversed and you can see that by the fact that they're uh, shaded in this red color right here and it's a very easy fix if we want to fix that. So these are fine. We don't have to do anything about these, but we can select these real quick. And if we hold down shift, right mouse button, and uh, we go to, uh, I think we actually need to select faces. 
So yes, make sure you have uh, the face selection, not the UV shell, and select those faces. And then if you hold down shift right mouse button, we just do flip and now they're fixed. So yeah, that was just a little thing that you have to watch out for. Uh, it's usually not that big of a deal, but um, you have to uh, keep in mind that if we were to texture this and wanted to add some detail, then everything that we do uh, on the UV coordinate system will show up uh, flipped uh, on the in 3D space because they were projected from um, from this side and not from this side. So again, these are all just sort of small things that you you'll get used to when, once you start doing this more. Uh, so those are those look fine. Let me take a look at what what, what I've left here. Um, and I think I actually want to do a planar projection on these as well. So let me actually go to faces. So I'm just going to select these um, sloped edges right here, these bevels that I've created. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a planar projection. And again, this is gonna th this is gonna cause the same problem that we have to fix real quick. Um, but before we do that, I just want to unfold them like so to make sure that yeah. Now, as you can see, again because I did a very simple planar projection that just projects it from uh, one side, um, my my UVs actually end up being a bit stretched. So we can fix that by just doing an unfold. Uh, that's layout I want unfold and that fix it fixes it and now I'm gonna select my shells and oh that's interesting it didn't flip these oh, I don't know I don't know why <laughs> that's interesting maybe because yeah I don't know why okay so we don't have to fix those because they're fine again if, if it's blue, it means that it's projected from the right side. So uh, then all we have left is this middle piece right here. And I'm just going to do another cylindrical projection because it's a very simple cylindrical shape. But we do need to rotate, rotate the cylinder. So I'm going to click my little red T again. And then I'm going to click my gizmo to get my rotate tools. And I'm just going to rotate it like so and commit and then I'm also gonna unfold it and I'm gonna strain it uh, so, so you can see we're already sort of starting to create like a little workflow for ourselves we're just we're just using very basic projections then we use unfold to relax them to a point where they're uh, they're more evenly distributed and then finally we do a straighten UV operation to get them uh, aligned on our UV coordinate. Um, the, the reason we are doing all these uh, straightening operations for our UVs is because we don't want to have too many like skewed or strangely rotated pieces going on because that will actually end up uh, taking up more UV space than what's needed. So. Uh, again, it's all about optimizing the space that you have. Um, later on, when we get to uh, creating more detailed models, we're going to talk about UDIMs. Um, I'm going to leave that out for now. Um, but yeah, so just keep that in mind. So finally, we have our foot, which is a bit more of a complicated um, geometry. But I'm just going to approach it the same way. I think I'm going to start by... whoops. I'm going to go to face. I'm going to select all of these faces on the side. And let me actually see if I can show you guys another cool feature that is uh, that you can use in Maya. So I have this side of my uh, foot selected and I, I want to have the same selection on the other side. So I can I can do that by just going uh, over here and selecting all of these uh, phases individually. I can also go up here to select and there should be, yeah, so when you go to select, there's an option that says similar. And when you click that, as you can see, it now sort of mirrors my selection. It doesn't do it really perfectly because it just selects these phases right here. 
but this can be very useful, especially when you have a lot of objects that have the same geometry and you want to select a specific part of uh, all of those. So I'm actually going to see if I can open up the options and similarly sort of edit the tolerance a little bit. Similarity tolerance, difficult word. Uh, click apply. It didn't really do much. Um, let me just try to do that again. Increase the tolerance even further. Okay, so yeah, that's good enough. Uh, I'm not going to mess around with it too much, but you get the idea. You can use that to sort of select, uh, select similar, similarly shaped geometry on a different part of your model can be really useful. So now that I have those two sites selected, I'm going to do a planar projection for them as well. Uh, and I'm going to kind of flip these as well. These faces. And now it, now it actually might be a bit clearer what, what Flip actually does, because now you can see that not only is it, uh, did it turn blue, which means we projected from the, we projected the normals, um, but also you can see that it, it sort of changed, it, it flipped the shape. So now we know that it's being projected from this side and not from this side. So, yeah. Uh, then I also want to, select all of these parts right here and uh, yeah I'm just gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna do a planar projection I'm gonna unfold them a little bit that messed it up and mess it up a little bit, but I can just rotate it like so. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it sort of matches the other one. And then what we have left is this middle part right here. And what I actually want to do with this one is make a seam right here. So again, because this is a hard edge, that's where I'm going to place my seam. Uh, I'm just going to go cut. And I think what I want to try, let me actually first make a couple of more cuts. So I know that everything is cut up the right way. And again, I'm just looking where all my hard seams are to cut up my model. cut. Uh, whoops, no, I need to be over here. I'm a little bit tired. I'm sorry, guys. So, uh, yeah, let me, so now what I did, I, I just selected, um, uh, I just cut up my model on all the hard seams and I selected the, the one part that I uh, wanted to unwrap. Uh, and you can see again what happens when you do uh, a planar projection from from an axis that isn't really conducive to the geometry that you have. You just get this line. It's basically all you get. It's just like you get the side of a flat face. So, yeah, that's what you end up with. And I think what I'm I, I think I'm just gonna unfold this as is and see what happens. And that didn't really work. So what I think I want to do is I want to uh, do one last new way of uh, projecting, which is uh, if we go to the top again, there's also an automatic mapping. And what that tries to do, it, it looks at your, it, it's basically a, a planar projection from three sides. So it, instead of just choosing one axis, it does a planar projection from three axis, uh, which sort of makes sense when you look at the symbol. Uh, and, and it tries to choose the best angle for each of the selected faces that you have. So uh, we get something like this, which isn't really pretty, but it's fine for what we wanted to do. So uh, I'm just gonna unfold this real quick. 
see what that does. Yeah, it looks fine. And now I'm just going to select the edges that I want to sew. And again, it already uh, put a, a seam right there where I want, wanted to have my seams. Now all I have to do is sort of uh, uh, stitch, stitch the edges that I don't want or the seams that I don't want. So I'm just going to go stitch together a couple times and that you do the trick. And again, these are like pretty much the basic, uh, the basic options for this, um, for, for this workflow. There, there are so many cool UV unwrapping tools that you can use, and and uh, Autodesk actually put in a lot of effort in the recent years to improve their UV, uh, their unwrapping experience because it used to be a lot worse than it is right now. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so that looks good, and I'm just gonna straighten this out, straighten UVs like that, it looks fine, and now all I have left are these, uh, this doesn't really look okay, I think I, I think I missed the face, yeah, I did, look, like this is one of the things you have to look out for guys, when, when you do stuff like this, you don't want to miss a little face like this and be left, uh, disappointed with your, <laughs> with your final uh, unwrap so let's see where where does that actually belong it belongs on did i miss it on the other side as well i did i think i did so let me just try and see what happens if i sew those together stitch together oh, that looks fine and that's actually flipped so let me actually uh before i stitch those together let me actually flip that face flip it's flipping me out, man. Stitch together. There we go. Okay, we're almost done. How long have I been recording for? Damn, it's already been an hour. These record. I, I, I always try to make them short and sweet, but I, I'm I still sort of trying to improve my my own uh, <laughs> my own re recording skills when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, so for this last, for these last bits, I'm just going to do another automatic unwrap, uh, automatic mapping because they're really simple. It's really simple geometry. And as you can see, Maya interprets simple geometry just fine. Uh, it doesn't really require that much uh, extra attention. Uh, actually, I s spoke too soon. It, it actually does. It, it's created some extra seams, which are totally unnecessary. So I'm just going to fix that real quick. Um, this is pretty useful as well. Whenever you select like a seam, uh, you can see that it sort of turns orange and the seam that sort of, uh, corresponds to it. So, um, the other side of the seam also turns orange. So you can see that when I, when I select this part right here, you can see it as well when I hover over it, that it selects two edges instead of just one because, uh, they are next to each other. So, yeah. I'm just going to stitch those together. And then I'm going to do one last unfold. There we go. So that should basically be our lag. And now all that's left to do for us is select everything. And we're going to go to layout, which, uh, well, literally lays out our UV core nuts on the zero to one UV space. So I think that concludes the unwrapping tutorial for now. Like I've been saying, there are a lot of other very cool tools that you can use to achieve this sort of result. But being that our geometry is still quite simple, all we really need is the basic tools. And as you can see, the result looks pretty good. So I hope, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, I'm, I'm going to start writing down some things that I want to do to sort of improve these things. I have a better microphone, so that's, I think, one good place to start. Uh, but for now, you know, just leave any suggestions for improvements or tips that you have in the comments down below or in the Discord. And I'll see you guys in the next one.